Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. Thank you so much for joining us on this morning, this beautiful Sunday morning. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. We know that this is the first Sunday in October, so this is our communion Sunday, so we ask that you be prepared to uh, take communion after Pastor Davis finishes his preaching. Also, the month of October is Clergy Appreciation Month. So we want to thank all of our pastors out there that are giving the word of God and, and just know that we do appreciate you letting us hear from God. Our scripture this morning will come from Romans 5, 6 through 9. And it reads, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. Thank God for his word for sending Jesus. Jesus' shed blood cleanses us from our sins. Well, you may ask, what is sin? Well, sin is missing the mark. Sin is doing anything that goes against God brought sin into this world when they disobeyed God, when they ate from the tree from which God told them not to eat. Ever since then, man has been sinning and wrestling with sin and falling far away from God. But thank God for sending his son Jesus to die for the world. It's because of the blood of Jesus that we can be sure of our salvation. Because Jesus' blood, after all of these years, will never lose its power. Thank Jesus for the shed blood on the cross. Way back on Calvary, it reaches to the highest mountains and it flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary the blood that gives me strength me strength from 
we thank you now we bless your name father we thank you for your mercy and your grace we thank you for another privilege another honor another opportunity to come before you lord we thank you for the blood of jesus his blood yes. reaches from the highest mountain yes. his blood flows to the lord's valley we thank you father god that his blood has changed us his blood has blessed us his blood is keeping us and we thank you this morning, dear Lord God. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us as we come to study your word. Bless your word, Father God, that your word will speak to us, speak through us, that your word, Father God, will make a difference in all our lives. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless this service. Bless this service, Father God, that men, women, boys, and girls will fall out with their evil ways, will turn to you, Father God, and pray. Father God, bless this land. As your word goes forth, Lord, we ask you to bless this land. As your word goes forth, Lord God, we ask you to bless men to come to repentance. And Lord, we ask you to keep us now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Yes, it does. It flows. It flows. And it flows. To the lowest. To the lowest. To the lowest valley. The blood, the blood of Jesus. From day to day, it will never lose. It will never. Its power. It will never lose its power. The blood of Jesus will never ever lose its power. Let me call your attention to the book of Psalms, Psalm number thirty, Psalm. Number 30, we will end this book of Psalm number 30 today. This, this number 30, we will end today. We've been here for the last three weeks. We will look at the last two verses of Psalm number 30 of today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We thank God for David and his writings and what he has brought us through and he's teaching us even right now, many years later. Psalm number 30, verses 11 and 12. Psalm number 30, verses 11 and 12. When you found it, you will discover these words. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. To the end, to, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. I will give thanks to you forever. I want to talk about thanksgiving for a lifetime. Thanksgiving for a lifetime. We find ourselves today at the crossroads of danger seen and unseen. We find ourselves in the great United States of America as well as throughout this world. We find ourselves going through some dilemmas that we've never gone through before. We find ourselves in sickness. We find ourselves really in trouble. But I want to tell you on this morning, Regardless of what you're going through, you have reasons to be thankful. Mm -hmm. Regardless of your situation, regardless of how much trouble you've had, regardless of your sickness, regardless of who walked off and left you, I want to tell you today you have reasons to be thankful. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to me, if you're seeing me, if you understand me, 
That means God has awakened you one more time. Yes, sir. And for that reason, and that reason alone, you have a reason to be thankful to God. Mm -hmm. For God has blessed you again, and he's blessed you again, over and over again. The God we serve is such a gracious God. He is such a such an awesome God. He is such a forgiving God that we all know that we should have been dead and gone, but God has blessed us to live on just one more time. Mm -hmm. And it's not because of your money. It's not because you've done everything right. And it's not because life has been so good to you and you've been so good in life. It's only because of God's amazing grace yes. that you're able to inhale and exhale on your own, that you're, you're able to feel the blood yet running warm in your vein. And for that, my dears, we ought to be thankful. Amen. We ought to thank God. We ought to thank God for, for just giving us breath, for just allowing us to be able to put one foot in front of the other. We ought to be thankful to God that we can either even roll our own wheelchairs. We ought to be thankful to God that we can walk on our walking canes. Yes, yes. We ought to be thankful to God that God has given us health, strength, and even a right mind. We ought to be thankful to God because God has delivered us one more time. When we look at Psalm number 30, David uses seven thank you terms when he talks to God. He uses the phrase you have seven times in just this one number of songs. When he talks about God, he reminds God what God has done for him and not what he has done for God. Too often times we remind God of how good we've been and and how we've looked out for God and how we have, have blessed God. Let me just tell you today, it doesn't matter how much you've done for God. You have not done enough to even compare to what God has done for you. Amen. God has always placed us in positions that we didn't deserve to be in. Have given He has given us jobs that we, we don't qualify for. God has always blessed us with food, clothes, and shelter. When we didn't have enough money, God has kept us. Yes. And for that today, I want to suggest to you that you ought to give thanksgiving to God for a lifetime. If he does nothing else, if he does not even wake you again, you have enough to give thanksgiving to God for a lifetime. Yes. The author, the writer, the psalmist, David here, he talks to God and he reminds God of how good God has been to him. I said to you two weeks ago that God had given David favor for a lifetime in verses one through five because David begins this psalm just as he ends this psalm. Mm -hmm. He begins it by saying, I extol you. I extol you, Lord. I, I lift you. I praise you. I raise you high. Oh, excellent God. I raise you. I lift you up because you have lifted me up. You've lifted me up, Lord. You have, you have given me rejoicing in the midst of my enemies. He says, Lord, I cried out to you. And Lord, you healed me. Let me just tell you today, even if you have not been sick enough to go to the hospital, when you were sick, the Lord healed you. Right. Yeah, we have to understand today, if there's any healing that's going to go on, it's going to come from the Lord. Uh, theologians believe that David had a near-death experience, a physical, a physical problem with his body. He, he was finding himself sick. And David said, I cried out to the Lord. Let me just tell you today, you need to spend some time crying out to the Lord. You need to spend some time in utterance unto God. You need to spend some time with God and letting God know how thankful you are to him. For you recognize what God has done for you. 
David goes on in verse number three and he says, you have lifted me from the grave. You have brought me from the grave. Now you need to understand, as I said to you two weeks ago, he's not saying that, that he resurrected him from the grave, but what he's saying is he kept him alive. He kept him from going down into the grave. He, he kept him from dying. He, he kept him alive to the point that he didn't go down into the pit. David says that I sing praises to the Lord. And then he invites us. He invites the saints of God to sing praises with him. Let me tell you, praises, praises and worship unto God ought to be a community affair. It ought to be a corporate thing. If, if God has done something for you, and he has, because you're able to hear me this morning, he has, wake, he has awakened you one more time, he's done something for you. If God has done something for you, you need to understand that he is worthy of the honor, the glory, and the praise. He talks about God and how God's holy name is to be blessed. He, he says, I give thanks in the remembrance. I give thanks in the remembrance of his holy name. Mm -hmm. The God we serve in verse number four, he says, the God we serve has a holy name, a name that's worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. In verse number five, he praises him because, because his, his anger is only for a moment. His anger is for a moment. And I said to you, I said to you uh, on two weeks ago that God has given him favor and this favor continues for a lifetime. God has blessed us. God has favored us. Amen. Favor is when we get something we don't deserve. Yes. <laughs> favor is God's way of amazing grace. You see, God doesn't calculate his favor for us based on how good we've been. He oh, calculates yes. his favor for us based on the fact that he is good Amen. and he is God. Amen. His favor, his favor has, has existed for us for a lifetime said to you two weeks ago in verse number five, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning light. <laughs> yeah, weeping may endure for a night. And some of you are going through some issues even right now. And you wondering, preacher, well, how long is the night? Mm -hmm. You're saying, preacher, I've been going through this for weeks. <laughs> I've been going through this for months. I, I've been going through this for years. And some of you will say, I've been going through this for many years. I want to say to you, hang in there. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Don't give out. And don't give in. For weeping endures for a night. Yes, right. But joy comes in the morning. And when the joy comes in the morning, it continues perpetually from now on said to you last week that, that the Lord is our helper. And because the Lord is our helper, he helps us even in tough time. He helps us even in a tough situation. He says, in verse number six, he says, for now in my prosperity, I said, I shall not be moved. You see, sometimes we get beside ourselves. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think we're blessed because we did it. Sometimes we think we blessed because we got degrees. Sometimes we think we blessed because we got money. Sometimes we think we blessed because we got a bank account. Sometimes we think we blessed simply because we got a house and a car. Let me just tell you right now, you're not blessed because you got stuff because if your health is failing, all of that stuff means nothing. I used to watch women. I used to watch women. I hope they don't do it anymore. I used to watch women put plastic on their, their couches and, and plastic on their chairs. And, and they had this designer living room where no one is, was allowed to sit on those couches. Now some of those women are dead and gone. And another woman has unveiled that couch. And everybody that wants to sit on that couch, everybody that walks in the door sits on that couch. Let me just share with you, it doesn't matter of the stuff you have. It doesn't matter what kind of materials you have. You need to honor God because God is the one who's blessing you. Amen. He says our prosperity even comes from God. The, the blessings we have come from God. Favor exists for a lifestyle. The blessings come from God. And today I want you to know in verses number 11 through 12 that we ought to be thankful. 
I just want to let you know one thing. You ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful, and your thanksgiving ought to last a lifetime. You ought to be thankful for what God has already done. You ought to be thankful of what God is going to do, and you ought to be thankful for what God is doing right now. Look at verse number 11, verses number 11 and 12, and I'll leave you alone, let you go ahead and eat your fried chicken, pork chop, or whatever you got. Uh, when he looks at verse number 11, the psalmist says, you have turned for me my mourning into dancing. That's a total opposite change. There's a direction, no change. There, there is a worshiping change. He says, you have turned my mourning into dancing. This word mourning means my wailing. This word mourning means my lamenting. I have stopped my lamenting. I have stopped weeping and wailing. I have stopped crying. I told you earlier that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning light. I said to you and I say to you again, the morning that God has, the morning that we're in the midst of, wait just a little while. God will turn your mourning into dancing. This word mourning means that you're down and out. This word mourning means that you're struggling with stuff. This word mourning means you're going through some things. This word mourning means that you have come to the end of the road and you don't know which way to go. I say to you today, the God that we serve will turn your mourning into dancing morning into dancing. This word dancing means a celebration. <laughs> this word dancing means that you get around and move. This word dancing means that you go from one point to the other and you celebrate. God is able to turn your morning into dancing. God is able to bless you in the midst of your morning and God will turn it into dancing. There ought to be somebody with me this morning who can testify that I was down and out. I was lamenting. I was weeping. I was wailing. But God turned my morning into dancing. I want to say to you today that we, we, we're caught up in some stuff that we'd rather not be caught up in. We, we are going through some things. Children having a hard time in school because of the coronavirus. Teachers are having a hard time in school. Superintendents don't know which way to turn. I say to you, trust God through the process and watch him turn your morning into dancing. Amen. The thing about morning is that people find themselves in the midst of pity parties. When they're in mourning, they find themselves asking God, God, do you see me? When they're in mourning, they find themselves looking for God and cannot find him. It's because they're going through some things that they really not go through. They're in mourning. But the good news, the good news today, the good news today that I want you to hear me here is the fact that God can turn your mourning into dancing. The thing about dancing is that you're not only celebrating within, but you're celebrating without. <laughs> the thing about dancing, not only do you have joy on the inside, other folks see your joy on the outside. The thing about dancing, you move from one end of the floor, one end of the building, to the other end of the floor, to the other end of the building. Let me tell you, you are traveling with your dancing. I want to say to you today, regardless of what you're going through, regardless of what you have gone through, you ought to be a traveling dancer. You ought to be a traveling celebrator. Folks ought to see you celebrating even when you're going through. Yes. The problem with us today is that we don't celebrate mm -hmm. until we see what God has already done. We don't celebrate until God has brought us all the way through it. Let me just share with you. If you're waiting on God to open a door, you ought to be celebrating in the hallway. If you're waiting on God to open a window, you ought to be celebrating in the room. You ought to make sure that you celebrate God even when you're waiting on him. That's right. Yeah, he will turn your morning. <laughs> you see, there's, there's a certain uh, attitude that comes with celebrating God. There's a certain attitude that comes with dancing. When you're dancing, you don't know who's watching. Wow. And really, you don't care who's watching. You see, when I grew up, the spank was out. I grew up, I listened to Morris Day, and he was saying, ooh, it's, it's time. And you need to understand that when it's time to praise the Lord, you don't need to, under, you don't need to worry about who's looking and who's seeing you. 
when it's time to worship him, when it's time to dance unto him. You don't need to be dancing for a shape, short form, or show. You need to be dancing because of God has blessed you and he's the only one who can. In your morning, you need to be celebrating. In your morning, you need to be dancing. In your morning, you need to make sure that others see you and you're not doing it because of a show. Yes. But you are doing it in the midst of a testimony. Mm -hmm. In the midst of your morning, folk need to see you testifying of the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. In the midst of what you're going through, whether whether you're going through sickness, whether you're going through divorce, whether you're going, going through financial issues, the Lord God will give you dancing in the midst of your Amen. morning. Then he says, verse number 11, Psalm number 30, he says, you have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. He is thanking God for God delivering him. He, he is thanking God for God securing him. He is thanking God for taking away his sackcloth. And many times when they had sackcloth, they also had ashes. Mm -hmm. And God is able to offer you beauty from ashes. When he says, what he, what he says is, you have put off my sackcloth. This word sackcloth was like a quilt. <laughs> this word sackcloth was a, a woven garment. Looked much like a crocus sack. Some of you from the country understand what a crocus sack was. It was not, and a sackcloth was not a pretty garment. And men, women, boys, and girls put on sackcloth when they were down and out, when they were in mourning. And matter of fact, they put it on so other folk would know that they're in mourning. Let me tell you, if, if, if you're in mourning, you don't need to throw a pity party. If you're in mourning, you don't need to invite folk to your pity party. I told a brother the other day, I said, man, you're trying to throw a party that I'm not interested in. I'm not coming to your party. I'm not getting on the floor with you on your party. I'm not participating in your party. Pity parties are to be turned into gladness. Yes. Says The psalmist says, you have put off my sackcloth. And you clothe me with gladness. God has a way of clothing you with gladness. Yeah, yeah. He has a way of pulling you out of the pit. He yeah. has a way of pulling you out of sadness. He has a way of pulling you out of moments of despair. If you just give it to him, he will turn your sackcloth into gladness. Not only does he say he turns it into gladness, he clothes you. <laughs> he clothes you. With gladness. When you look at Mark chapter 5, there's a man running crazy in the graveyard. The Bible says that he's naked and he is fierce because when other men came that way, he attacked them or he threatened them. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5 that this man that was running crazy in the graveyard, he was running around naked and every time somebody approached him and every time they tried to shackle him and chain him, he broke the chain and the fetters. Mm -hmm. Let me just share with you today. But verse number six of Mark chapter five says when Jesus showed up, he ran to Jesus and he bowed down before him. Let me tell you, God has a way of blessing us. Even in our worst condition, he has a way of turning our sackcloth into ashes. And then the following few verses says, when Jesus showed up, the man ran to him, bowed down and worshiped him. Jesus set him free right there on the spot. The Bible says that when the town folk came out, they saw the man clothed and in his right mind. <laughs> they saw a naked man that was once naked, now clothed and in his right mind. Now, that's how it is right here in, in Psalm number 30. The Bible tells us in Psalm number 30 that God no longer allows us to be clothed with sackcloth, but he's now clothing us with gladness. Mm -hmm. The word gladness means joy. This, this word gladness means pleasure. This word gladness means we're excited about life again. Because when you're in mourning, when you're in sackcloth, you're not excited about life. But when you have faith in God, 
God can allow you to be pushed to the next level if you just trust him. You can be clothed with gladness. Word gladness not, mean, not only means to rejoice, it means to rejoice forevermore. It means to continue to have joy. Let me just share with you. It doesn't matter what you go through. You can have great joy in the midst of it. Because God has a way of taking off your sackcloth and clothing you with gladness. Hallelujah to the Lamb. My final verse, verse number 12. Psalm number 30, verse 12 says, To the end that my glory, to the end that my glory, to the end that my glory may sing praise to you. To the end. He's saying, I recognize, I recognize the fact that you have taken away my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness to this end, to the end that I, my glory, this word glory, this, this word, this word glory, this word glory means my inner self, my soul, my very inner being. Now, the same God that has wiped me away from sackcloth and ashes, the same God who has delivered me from my enemies, this is what David is saying. Not only did you heal my body, but you also delivered me from my enemies. You not only blessed me in the midst of my supplications, not only did did you give me profit in my spirit and in my soul? Not only, God, did you have mercy on me, but you also, to this end, bless my innermost being. Not only have you blessed me, you have in part singing. You have imparted, you have imparted praise in me. God has a way of blessing us. God has a way of blessing us and imparting praises in us and singing in us. The good thing about it, you don't have to be able to hold a A, B, C, D tune. You don't have to be able to sing in B flat or C flat. Everybody ought to be able to sing in their innermost being. This word glory means their innermost being. We ought to be able to sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you, I tell folk on a regular basis, you may laugh at my singing, but the fact of the matter is, I'm not singing to you anyway. <laughs> I'm not singing to you. I'm not glorifying you. I'm not celebrating you. I am celebrating the all-sufficient God himself. Amen. I am celebrating what God has already done. Not only am I celebrating what he's done, I'm celebrating who he is. Too often we celebrate what God has done, and when God doesn't do what we want him to do, we stop celebrating him. But when we celebrate who he is, we celebrate him regardless of what's going on around us. That's the difference between happiness and, and joy. When you, when you are happy, you base, your happiness is based on what's happening. <laughs> if things around you are happening, then you're happy. If things around you are popping, then you're happy. If things around you are victorious, then you're happy. But let me just share with you, the child of God who can stand in the midst of trouble, the child of God who has trouble, and he can still have great joy, he celebrates anyway. He celebrates, he celebrates what God has done in the past. He celebrates what God is doing right now, even in the midst of your suffering. God is doing some great things in your life. Hang in there. Watch what God is doing. He is always working behind the scene. That's right. You may be in tears right now, but God is working behind the scene. Mm -hmm. You may be in trouble right now, but God is working behind the scene. You need to trust him to take your morning and take your morning and turn it into dancing. You need to trust him to take your sackcloth and give you gladness. Right. To that end, to the end that my soul may sing praises to you. Look at the psalmist. He, he's not talking to any man. He's talking to God. Mm -hmm. The trouble with us is we spend our time talking to man and not talking to God. 
We spend our time tweeting it out. We, we spend our time emailing it out. We spend our time Facebooking it out. We spend our time uh, going TikToking it out. We spend our time talking to other men when we ought to be talking to God and thanking God for who he is and what he has done. To the end that my glory may sing praises to you. He comes to a conclusion here. He says, God, you bless me to such an end that I'm going to sing praises to you. Mm -hmm. He says, God, you bless me in such a way that I'm going to sing praises to you. Mm -hmm. He says, God, I'm going to thank my boss for what he's doing, but I'm going to sing praises unto you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to appreciate the things I see in athletics, but I'm going to sing my praises unto you. Mm. I'm going to appreciate what my spouse does. I'm going to appreciate what my children do, but I'm going to sing praises unto the Lord. You sing praises. Your innermost being gets involved. You begin to celebrate. This word praises not only talk about singing unto him. The word praises also means singing with the music. <laughs> The word praises also means singing with the instruments. The word praises also mean everything around you take on another form when you get involved with God. When you praise unto the Lord, somebody said the other day, when praises go up, blessings come down. I just want to tell you, even if the praises doesn't go up, if God want to bless you, he's going to bless you. But you ought to have sense enough to say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you for who you are. Praises go up. Blessings come down. He says, sing praises to you, Lord. Look at who he's singing it to. He's singing it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have to concentrate on singing unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure we give God glory before we step out of bed in the morning. In every situation you're in, you ought to give God the glory Amen. for all that you do. Spent my time on, on life support, about 18 hours or so. And the moment they snatched the tube out, they, someone asked me, how am I doing? I said, excellent. <laughs> Let me tell you, if you got life support tubes down your throat, in your heart, in your mind, in your innermost being, you ought to thank God for who he is and what he's already done. You ought to be able to thank him. Too many times we have folk complaining about their conditions instead of celebrating God in the midst of their condition. We have to get to a point in our life where we celebrate God in the midst of all that's going on around us. Amen. We ought to celebrate him. The psalmist says in verse number 12, and I'm not going to be silent. <laughs> he says, I'm going to praise him. And I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to sing praises unto him. And I'm not going to be silent. He says, I'm not going to be silent. This word silent means I'm not going to be still. The word silent means that, that, that I, I am not going to be handicapped. I'm, I, this word silent means that, that I'm not going to be quiet. This word silent means that I'm not going to be holding my peace. In other words, I'm going to make some noise. That's why the psalmist says in one psalmist says in, in 100 that I am coming into the courthouse with praises. I'm coming into the courtyard with praises. He says, I will praise the Lord. Everything that has breath are praised. The holy name of God. We ought to praise him. I just want to let you know that if you're really going to walk with God, you ought to praise him in the good times and praise him in the bad times. He says, I'm going to praise him. And I will not plead the fifth. <laughs> he said, I'm going to praise him and, and I'm not going to keep my mouth quiet. And, and some of us praise him with a loud voice and other of us are kind of shy in the midst of it. I, it, it. It blesses me every chance I get when I see an old woman or old man on the TV who have gone through storms and gone through the rain and gone through tornadoes and hurricanes. But yet they look at their house and their house is in splinter. All they ever saved in all their lives is gone, but they say, but well, I got breath in my body, and they just start praising right there on TV, right there in the midst of national news. They begin to worship God. Let me tell you, regardless of what's going on around you, you better worship God. You better thank God. Regardless of what disease you have, you better thank God, because if you're going to come out, he's the one who will bring you. Bring you out. 
Finally, the psalmist says in Psalm number 30, verse number 12, O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. He says, O Lord, my God, I'm going to commit myself <laughs> to thanking you and to praise you forever. <laughs> He says, he says, he says right there in the text, it's in my Bible. It says, oh Lord, my God, I, I will give thanks to you forever. Let me just share with you this word give thanks. This phrase give thanks means that I will confess. I, I will, I will shoot back at you. In other words, we ought to be shooting thanksgiving back to God. We ought to give thanks and confess unto the Lord and, and thank him for blessing us one more time. I got up this morning. I just want to say, Lord, I thank you. I, I started on my way. I want to say, Lord, I thank you. I'm in right, my right mind. Lord, I thank you. I have health and strength. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for hope. Lord, I thank you for sparing my life. Lord, I thank you that you kept me in my right mind. Lord, I thank you for keeping me focused. Lord, I thank you for your deliverance. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, I thank you for your salvation. Lord, I thank you for your justification. Lord, I thank you for, for your sanctification. And, and Lord, I even thank you for what's going to happen in the future. I Amen. thank you for my glorification. Amen. He says that I ain't going to shut up. I'm not going to keep still. I'm, I'm not going to keep on dancing. You know the story of Shouting John, how they wanted to put him out to church because every Sunday Shouting John got up and getting to dance. And then one day the deacons went out to Shouting John's church uh, house. The deacons from the church went to Shouting John's house and, and they said, we can't have that in our church. We are a quiet church. You can't be doing that dancing in our church. He said, well, wait just a minute. You see that land that you just drove up on? God gave me that land. You see this mule that I'm walking behind? God gave me this view. You see all this crop that's, that you're walking in the midst of? God gave me this crop. Just wait a minute. Let me have a praise break. Hold my mule. And he began to dance. If you won't let me dance in your church, you don't have to be in the church. You ought to celebrate who God is and what God has already done. Amen. You ought to celebrate him. You ought to be thankful for him. And finally, he says, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to praise you. For so long until it's going to be forever. Thanksgiving ought to be for a lifetime. You ought to thank him for a lifetime. Number one, when he says forever, it means that it's going to be from now on. Number two, when he says forever, he means it's going to be at all times. Number three, when he says forever, it means it's going to be continual. Number four, when it says forever, it means that it's going to be life changing. Number five, when he says forever, it's going to be perpetual. In other words, I'm going to wake up in the morning, praise. When I get up the next morning, and I'm going to be praising. I'm going to thank God for what God is Amen. and who he's done. And finally today, we ought to thank God for the leader that he has placed before us. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Now, let me just share something with you. Because of Jesus, we are who we are. Because of Jesus, we do what we do. Because of Jesus and Jesus' leadership. You see, Jesus' leadership has made us who we are. Jesus' leadership has brought us a brand new day. Jesus' leadership has offered us another plan. Now, Jesus won't, won't put us at, at stake. Jesus won't blame us for the problem. Jesus' leadership, you see a real leader, doesn't expose us to those things that may kill us. The real leader took the cross himself. The real leader died for us. The real leader, the great leader, we need to depend on Jesus, the leader himself. Hey, hey, Jesus himself. He took a tree, I tell you. When we were down and out, when we have fallen short, when we have fallen out, when we were not fit to live, we were too mean to die. Jesus took a tree. My Washed up Calvary's hill. He died on a scar hill called Calvary. Hey, hey, yes, he did. He gave his blood for us. He died. He died. He died. Amen. They took him off the cross. They laid my Lord and your God in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power. And we ought to celebrate his getting up power. Amen. 
That same resurrected power, that same power, the same Holy Spirit that raised up a dead Jesus. If you're saved, if you're born again, that same spirit is in you. Amen. And we ought to celebrate him daily. We ought to celebrate him continually. We ought to celebrate him perpetually. We ought to celebrate him eternally. We ought to celebrate him for, from now on. We ought to celebrate him forever because he is Jesus, the Christ. We've come today to tell you that Thanksgiving ought to be for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Not concerned about what's going on. Not concerned about what's happening. But more concerned about how I can let men, women, boys, and girls know. The same Jesus who's our great leader. Who will never expose us. The same Jesus who paid the price for us. The same Jesus who has great leadership. The same Jesus who, who, who prepared a place for us. Yes. The same Jesus that took on all responsibility. Our Jesus never said, I don't take any responsibility. But he took total responsibility. He died for us. Yes. He rose for us. And if you're here today, and you've never trusted this Jesus, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You ought to come to Jesus just as you are. Without one plea, just, just come to him. Without trying to get it right, for you would never get it right. It takes Jesus getting it right for you. There may be somebody listening to me today who never tried this great leader. You put your hope in the president and he has failed you. You see, the thing about Jesus, he blesses those who bless him. And he also blesses those that don't vote for him. It's a terrible leader who will expose those who believe in him to death. It's a terrible leader who will knowingly, willingly, recklessly, intentionally do you harm. We have that kind of leader in the great United States of America. I recommend Jesus who will never ever expose you to harm. Matter of fact, he died to rescue us from harm. You see, we were on our way to harm. We were on our way to hell. But Jesus the Christ over 2,000 years ago he died for you and he died for me. He rose for you. He rose for me. And he's saying to you today, come. The door of the church is open. You, get, you need to get to know him. Get to know Jesus. The door is open. If you never trusted Jesus, as your personal savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to get to know him. It's your opportunity to trust Jesus as you can trust no other leader. You can get to know him today. He can be your Lord. He can be your savior. Will you try him? Will you trust him? The door is open. You can get to know him by inviting him into your life. I want to pray a simple prayer that goes kind of like this. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Come into my life and make me a new person. 
thank you for saving my soul. If you can believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. Will you join me in prayer? Just repeat after me and invite him into your life. Let's bow our heads and you call on the name of the Lord and invite him into your life to save your soul. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer, you are now born again and that you're on your way to heaven when you die because we're all going to leave here. We believe that you will miss hell and that you will raise your eyes in heaven. And if there are those of you who have joined us who are already saved, but you need a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the captain, where Jesus is the main attraction, where Jesus is the king, where Jesus is the one we focus on. I recommend the New Beginning Church where you can be a part of a family of faith that love the Lord. If you want to join our church, you can do so even on live broadcasts. Just inbox me and let me know that you want to make New Beginning Church your church home. You can get to know him. You can get to trust him. And if you need prayer, inbox me and let me know that you need prayer. And in the midst of the church praying, God answers. We want to make sure that, that every person who listens to our broadcast are safe in the arms of Jesus. And for those of you who have received Christ today, please inbox me and let me know that you received Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And we will rejoice with you and thank God for you. It is now that we turn our minds and our hearts toward communion. For over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died. And before he died, he gave his disciples communion. He said, for as often as you do this, it shows forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So go ahead and get your crackers out, your drink out, and we will fellowship today in communion. If sin has been your thing and sin is on your heart, let me just say to you, you can confess your sin to the Lord right now. He will forgive you for your sin and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So we want to prepare our hearts for communion. We want to prepare to partake in that sacrament that Jesus Christ said we should do it. And as often as we do it, it shows forth his death and his suffering until he comes, until he comes again. We have bread, crackers, whatever you have chosen, and we have drink whatever you have chosen. We use grape juice or some colored juice to represent the blood of Jesus. So we wanna thank you, our visitors, our friends, our family members, as well as our members of the New Beginning Church for joining us today in communion. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. 
God, we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we honor you, Father, for just being God. Now, Lord, we come now asking you to forgive us for our sins. Bless our lives. We pray that as we partake of communion, Father God, that you will bless us, that we will not drink damnation to our souls, that we will forgive other men and other women. We pray, Father God, that our communion would not be in vain. We come today to give honor to you, God. We thank you for Jesus and what he's already done. We come with the bread and we come with the drink to recognize the fact that we know that Jesus has saved our souls. In Jesus' name, we pray that you bless the tables all over this world, all those that will partake. Bless the people, bless the children, bless the adults. And bless us now, Father God, as we partake in communion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. When Jesus met with his disciples, he took his bread, he broke it, and he blessed it. He gave thanks for it as we have just done. And he said to his disciples, this is my body, which I have given for you. Eat ye all of it. And then he held up a cup. And he says, this is the cup of the New Testament. This is a representation of my blood. I give my blood to you for the remission of your sins. Drink all of it. Amen. Amen. Amen and thank the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We believe that we all ought to do this. We've chosen to do it on first Sundays, on New Year's, on Christmas, Resurrection Sunday, special days, as well as first Sunday. For Jesus didn't say when to do it. He says for as often as you do it. He shows for, we show forth his death and suffering until he come again. Thank you for joining us today in communion. Thank you for joining us for our service. And now it is offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It is time to give unto the Lord. It is time to give unto the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. You can do so by one of three ways. First of all, you can do so by Cash App. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Soul. Cash app. Our cash tag is NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. Or you can do so by Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea here is as we lift Jesus, he draw all men unto us, unto himself rather, lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. That's your Zell, our Zell account. Or if you have chosen to send in a check, please do so by mailing to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, seven seven four five nine i want to thank you for joining us here today in our worship service you can continue to join us in bible study every wednesday night at 7 20 p.m you can continue to join us in our bible study on wednesday at 7 20 p.m thanks to our visitors and our friends for joining us for bible study and you can also join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., 9 o'clock a.m. 
where we have two uh, great men standing and teaching the Word of God in Bible study at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, Sunday school rather, 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. And then at 1045, this service that we are just concluding, thank you for joining us. Please join us every Sunday at 1045 a.m., 1045 a.m. for our worship service. Please join us every Sunday morning. Again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing in our offering, in our time in worship, Bible study, Sunday school, in our worship service. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Just want to say to you and remind you, please, ma'am, please, sir, go out and register to vote. The deadline for registration is this week, October the 5th. October 5th, tomorrow, October the 5th, is the deadline to register to vote. Every person needs to be registered to vote. Please, ma'am, please, sir, take some time away from your busy schedule, your, your regular time schedule, and go out and register to vote. After you register to vote, you need to go ahead and vote. <laughs> You need to vote. People have died for your right to vote. People have struggled for your right to vote. Uh, here in Texas, the early voting begins October the 13th and goes through October the 30th. We need to go out and vote. Um, we live in different situations, different times. So if you can vote early, that's a better way to do it. So I'm waiting on October the 13th for my date to vote. The regular voting day is November the 3rd. Do not let November the 3rd pass you by without going out and casting your vote. You need to vote. Thirdly, we need to be praying. Thirdly, pray. Please pray. Lift up the circumstances and the situations. Continue, continue to pray. Continue to lift this nation, this world before the Lord. He certainly has the whole world in his hand. We need to continue, continue to pray. But let me say to our youth and our young people, I know you're in school. I know you're in your own jobs. I know you're doing some great things in the Lord. On third Sunday, we want to highlight our young people, even virtually. On third Sunday, we want to highlight what our young people are doing, whether you have a job evaluation, whether you have report cards, uh, whether you have degrees or are moving towards your degree, we want to highlight you next third Sunday. This is for two weeks from now. Please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, inbox or talk to or call Sister Carolyn Davis so we can get all of you accomplished celebrating. We want to celebrate your accomplishments. Please, ma'am, please, sir, young men, young women, uh, if we were face to face in and in church, we would have a, a, a box that we pray over for our children's report cards. We, we would drop their report cards in the box. We would drop their degrees, their studies, drop them in the box and pray over them. I want you to know that your pastor is praying for you, praying for you as you struggle, as many of us are struggling through school. We're praying for you and we all are praying for each other. We are praying for you. So please, ma'am, please, sir, make sure you get in your information before Thursday Sunday so we can celebrate you live on our live broadcast for the great things that you've done. You may have found another job. We want to celebrate that. You may have gotten a good evaluation. We want to celebrate that. If you have a bad evaluation, we want to pray over that. We want to pray for new jobs, we want, but you need to let us know what we're praying for. And you need to make sure that we get you accomplished so we can highlight them and celebrate them. We want to make sure that we celebrate our youth and their accomplishments and all that they do. Again, to our visitors, thank you so much. To our family members and friends, thank you for joining us here at the New Beginning Church remote location. Thank you for being a part of our service every Sunday and every Wednesday. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, join us for 9 a.m. Sunday school on Sunday morning. 10.45 a.m. Sunday morning worship service, 7.20 p.m. On, on Wednesday night for our Bible study. Thank you so much for making this a wholesome place to study the Lord's Word and a place to deliver, to, 
deliver souls from the wiles of the devil. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I'm praying with you, praying for you. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you. God, we bless you. We honor you. We praise you. We thank you for who you are and for what you do. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are turning our mourning into celebration and dancing. We thank you, Lord, that you are taking away our sackcloth. You're removing us from the ashes. And you're giving us a clothing of gladness, of pleasure, of plenty, of prosperity. We thank you, Lord. God, we thank you, Father, for another chance just to honor you in praise and worship. And Lord, we make the commitment today that we will not stop worshiping you. We will not stop praising you. We will not stop honoring you. We pray that you bless us now. Bless every person who has and will hear this broadcast that their lives will be changed for the better, that they will be drawn closer to you and be blessed by you. Massage our hearts, Father, in such a way that we will always walk with you and honor you in our testimonies. Bless our lifestyles, that our lifestyles will glorify you. It's in the precious, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray. We ask it all. Amen. And thank God. Thank you so much for joining us. We here at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Thank you. God bless you. And God keep you is our prayer. Thank you so much for joining us.